Well, good to see you. Let's get started. If you haven't heard already, there's people freaking out about OpenAI's latest text to video. And before that, people were freaking out about Runway. And before that, they were freaking out about Eleven Labs. Before that, it was Kriya. And before that, it was MidJourney. And there's like a million other apps out there where people are freaking out about, about AI. And I know that it feels like you're overwhelmed. Maybe like you're not keeping up. Maybe you can feel a little bit jealous because you see people creating some really cool things out there with AI that you're not capable of doing. I feel the same way. And here's the thing. Stop it. Who cares? It's not a race. 90% of the shit that's out there that people are using AI to create is useless. It's just fluff. Now, I've seen a few examples of packaging that's been designed with AI because I'm focused on packaging. And this has actually hit the shelves and people are promoting it on LinkedIn saying, look at my cool packaging that I made with AI. And it's like a bunch of ugly stand-up pouches and cans and random things that don't really tell a story. Yes, they may have been really, really fast to create, but it's not a race. Packaging and branding and product development is not about speed. It's about quality. It's about story. It's about connection. These are some of the things that are missing in AI right now because everybody's so enamored with the glossy images that it can generate. I mean, it's pretty damn cool. It can generate stuff that I can't create any other way. So it is kind of cool, but it's still pretty useless. Today, without a good story, a good concept, a strong strategy, storytelling. AI is not going to build you a brand, a product that's going to outsell anybody else. It's not going to take you from being a freelance artist to owning an eight-figure agency in a year. I know it all feels like this because people are talking about it, but it's not quite there. So instead of showing you all the crazy things that AI can do, I'm going to tone it down. I'm going to show you what AI is capable of doing when you're using it as a tool and you're creating with it, not letting it create for you. It's not in charge. You're in charge. I'm going to show you how to be in charge. I'm the boss. We're going to do this by building something, a strong concept, the normal way, by asking questions, by exploring, concepting, creating. It's a collaborator. I kind of think of it as a second subconscious. It takes my ideas, bounces them around while I'm working on something else. I can throw an idea out at it. It can come back with something. I'll keep working on whatever it is that I'm doing. And these ideas just keep flowing. It allows me to think a little bit faster. But I'm going to show you how you can get AI to create your next project. So what we're doing today is we're going to create a product and packaging from scratch using AI to get us to the concept stage, to get the base in place. And then as designers, we can go back in and fine tune and actually create and illustrate and do all these other things. We're not going to let it do everything for us. So I reached into my fridge. I had salsa. I hated the packaging. I don't even know how I got it in my fridge because it's so ugly. It wasn't even that great. But salsa comes in a jar. You've seen salsa. You probably have salsa in your fridge. If you don't, you've at least seen somebody eating salsa. I don't know why you wouldn't have salsa in your fridge. We need more salsa. Where's the salsa? No salsa. (laughs) But let's take that concept, right, of just the regular salsa, the you know, name your brand. It's all pretty terrible. But it all comes in glass jars with a metal lid. And there's probably some kind of label on the front of it. And maybe an additional label on top. Or they put like a little paper label that goes over over the lid, down in the glass to give you, it gives it like an authentic feel. But let's kind of create something from scratch. Let's say we've kind of done some of the strategy. All these images are created by AI. So they're completely useless. Then after you do your strategy, you're probably going to use a mood boarding. Right? This mood board was completely generated by AI. Every single image, everything there. I didn't do anything, but a client can come to you with this, or you can create something like that in the early phase to start ideating and showing and making sure you're on the right path. Then you go into sketching. What are some of the ideas here? How does that, you know, how does that work? How do these guys come together? These sketches, AI, I didn't create these. These are too ugly to be mine, but that's like the whole point is like, you can do every single step with AI just because you can, doesn't mean that you should. So let's start at the very, very beginning through that door walked in a client and they've got a salsa. They're coming from Monterey, Mexico, and they want to create a packaging design for the salsa that they make. That's completely different from anything else that's on the market. So we go through our strategy, concept, mood board, concept sketches. We do all that stuff. But during those phases, what we're actually doing is we're pulling back the layers and kind of figuring out what speaks to the consumer. Who's the consumer? How's it made? What's the story that it's telling? But that's the part that we're going to go through right now. And we're only going to use chat GPT to take us through this entire thing. Yes, there's a million other apps out there that you can use. And just because they're there doesn't mean you need to use them. You can keep it really, really simple. I'm going to show you how. First off, this also is coming from Monterey, Mexico. 
Uh, I picked Monterey. Monterey is really cool because there's like a whole story about a Swiss designer that married a Mexican woman and moved to Monterey. He built his agency and then people that worked for him has gone, have gone out and built their own agencies that are all world famous. But it all started with the Swiss designer that came in and kind of changed the way people did things. So that's kind of romantic. It's kind of cool. We can play on that. So first thing is I'm going to talk to ChatGPT. It's weird, but I just talked to like a person. So I go, hey, how are you going to describe the modern aesthetic of Monterey? And just let it let it kind of just talk to you. Let it tell you. And it gives you a bunch of stuff here. It's like the modern aesthetic Monterey. Mexico is fascinating blend of contemporary and industrial design elements, blah, 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 blah. Right? And it, it kind of contrasts it with the old tapestry, with the rich tapestry of colonial architecture. It starts kind of building the story of the city. Okay. And this is something that you're going to do when you're building a brand, when you're designing a product, when you're telling a story, you need to know the characters. You need to know the different elements to pull from. Location is one of them. And this is great. So read through that. Then talk about the colors that you're seeing in Monterey with this Swiss inspired design aesthetic that you're seeing there. Um, and it's going to give me like a list of colors right now. I can Google Monterey. I can go find it. You know, that's a way to do it, but this at least gets the ball rolling and maybe it's pulling things that I wouldn't necessarily see by Googling. Maybe I would see this by visiting. Maybe this is the next best thing because you're actually having a conversation. Then I would say, reach out to somebody in Monterey, reach out to one of the agencies, reach out to one of the other salsa companies. And obviously if you're working with a client from Monterey that's building the salsa company, then, you know, kind of dig in. Don't just count on AI to do everything for you because AI hallucinates. It comes up with, makes up shit more than I do. So you can't really always trust it, but it's a good way to kind of speed up your process. All right, so we're going to dig in a little bit more. How do you describe the flavors there? Like what's, you know, how would you even describe the city to somebody that's never even been there before, right? And it's going to give you some information, right? You've got the carne asada that happens everywhere, the Alpa store, but then you've got like all these little other things that, that it tells you. What's important here is the terminology, the words that it's using to describe these different components of the city, of the food, of the flavors, because these are the things that you're going to pull and you're going to build something from. Let's kind of pull some of that stuff back. Street taco visual, right? Because you can see that throughout all of Mexico. Let's just focus on the flavors from that area. Spices, the ingredients, maybe some of the more unorthodox flavors that, that you get in that region. We don't want to just do a regular salsa. This isn't a paste picante or, you know, some Taco Bell. So like we're coming up with something that is of the city. And, you know, here it is. It's giving you a bunch of information. It's giving you the machaca meat. It's talking about the nopalitas, the... Um, the cactus, all these little things that are interesting. Now, of these things, what can go into salsas? You've got the chili, serrano, you've got the achote. Um, there's a bunch of different things in here, but maybe the nopalitas is the one thing that kind of, kind of sticks out, right? Cactus, because you don't see that in a lot of salsa. But I don't even know if, do, do people put nopalitas in salsa? So, ask it. And it's going to tell you, yeah, maybe they are. They're a little, they give you a little bit of information about the flavor. It's a little bit tart. It's a little sweet. Okay. And when it gives you something new or something that's interesting, pat it on its back. The crazy thing is that ChatGPT has an ego. So tell it it's doing a good job. Say, wow, that's, that was great information. It's super interesting. Thank you so much for that. And then kind of shift your comment, whatever, however you're going to shift it. Um, right. So interesting. So how would you paint a picture? And you can even see my typos in here. It doesn't, doesn't matter anymore. You can, it, it, plows right through it right so how would you paint a picture of a visitor from paris that explains the sierra madre oriental oriental because i want it to paint this visual for somebody that's never been there from a completely other place on the planet that is known for food as well um one thing i will do is i'm going to go check make sure that sierra madre actually runs through monterey because i'm not familiar it could be hallucinating and i don't want to go down the wrong path so do yourself a favor use google to bounce things off of um, well, like I said, call somebody, talk to someone, your clients from there, ask them. It starts explaining this area and the region to somebody that's not from there. Um, and I pull up some images. What does it look like? Where is it? All right. So one of the things that stood out to me in the Google search was the cliffs, right? These huge mountains with greenery, but then there's areas where it's the mountains have just slid off and there's just these sheer cliffs and there's texture, like this tactile texture in like a concrete looking base of a mountain, which ties into the modern aesthetic of the city. And in the city, you see a lot of vertical architecture, a lot of vertical lines in the architecture. So these two things start kind of tying together. The Sierras have these sheer cliffs, the vertical lines. How are you going to describe the color of those? How are you going to describe, you know, ask it to describe something. All right. So you want it to be in a picture because that's what we're doing. We're painting pictures with words and we're helping and we're having AI help us do that. We're having chat help us do that. It gave us some good information. We're going to pat it on its back. Beautiful. 
Great job. So condense this whole information down to maybe five bullet points, one sentence each. You tell it kind of what you want, how much information you want, because yeah, you've read all of it, but you're not containing all of it. So I have it pull some of that information and just kind of condense it. This is like a super long prompt here. It's, you know, talking about the, the food, the mezcal, the beers, um, the flavor, the tanginess, the mountains, the fresh salsa. I right? like have it just give you, you know, you put in all the things that you want, that you pulled from all the information before that you want it to kind of wrap up for you. And here it is. And the crazy thing is like, all right, you're probably thinking, why the hell am I watching this? Why have you not designed something with AI? The thing is that we are, right? It's there. We're just chipping away until we find what's inside, what's, what we're actually creating. Yeah, anybody can jump on here and say, make me a jar of salsa. And it will do it. It might be pretty good. But there's no story. There's nothing there. It's just empty images. And this is the way that you would work normally. Right, you're going to work with your client. You're going to sit there. You're going to talk, and you're going to ask questions. And this is maybe something to do at the very early stage, because you're learning. You're doing some research here. It's just a little bit faster. And the fact that it's faster does speed things up in the process. Now, when you go back to your client, you'll have maybe some images. You'll have a mood board. You'll have some of these different things. But more important than anything else, is you're going to have the framework of a story. And yeah, we're going to show you how to create some packaging. But the visuals are like the least important part of this. The most important part is being able to create a story, being able to create like the visual picture through words of what we're talking about, right? And that's what's important here. We want to use the tools for what they're for. Midjourney makes pretty pictures of random shit, right? You can use it for marketing. You can use it for like billboards. You can use it for backgrounds. There's a lot of different ways to use it, but packaging isn't it. Not yet, not today. But this is, again, chipping away at that store. You're building something together. So, all right, so like what if we want to, you know, getting back to the salsa. All right, so getting back to the salsa, like what if we want to envision this city, but in the form of a container, right, in the form of a jar? You know, what kind of words are we going to use? So it tells us, right, maybe some innovative materials. Because there's some really modern architecture. So what are those? Maybe steel, uh, maybe copper. Um, there's some cultural motifs in here. We want to make sure that we're being sensitive to the area as well. Um, you know, it talks about some interactive elements. Maybe that's a little bit too far ahead for what we're doing. We're just doing salsa. We're not looking at building a, a Tron motorcycle. All right, salsa is always packed in a glass container. Blah, 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 blah. Right. Um, we want to avoid the stereotypical images of Mexico, right? The cliches. What does that look like? What kind of imagery would we be pulling from? I haven't built anything yet, but I can start to see this. I can start to visualize it in my head of like what would make sense. I'm going back to the sheer cliffs. I'm going back to the materials. Maybe the jar has like a steel lid, like a pitted steel lid. We've got some really sharp facets on a, on a glass bottle, right? Like all these little things start to play a role in what we're going to create. And we haven't created shit yet. And that's what's cool about this is you're just having a conversation. You're, you're pumping the brakes to just get to know the project. And that's what AI is there to help you do. It's a tool. It's there to help you not just create random shit. You're just going to waste your time, your client's time, and a lot of money developing some ugly packaging when you could really be creating a beautiful story. All right, so at this point, maybe I want to start looking at visuals. Maybe I want to start seeing what this looks like. Um, and this is a lot faster, right? This would be maybe a day's worth of conversations that just happens throughout the day while I go and explore things. Maybe I go to a grocery store, maybe I go try some flavors. Maybe I meet with the, with the brand, taste, you know, have a tasting. Like all these different things are part of the process. We're expecting to type in some words and get the packaging to be done and move on and build, you know, a hundred grand and get, 30 of those a week, but that's not life. That's not the way it works, right? We, we've got to create a story, a compelling narrative, a reason for people to believe, a reason for people to pick up the jar, a reason for people to buy the product and keep coming back. AI is not going to do that, All right? So what if we ask it, what does this thing look like? We tie in the Sierra Madre. We talk about the cliffs. We talk about the modern 
uh, aesthetic of the city, you know, some of the flavors. And then I just ask him to put it together. Everything you've known, everything you've given me, all the prompts, everything you've responded to, what's that look like in a jar? And it generates it. And I got to be honest with you. I love this first concept. Yes, there's a mountain inside with these sheer cliffs that actually look like the real cliffs. Um, but that's not what I care about. Right? I'm not looking to make a diorama here. I'm looking to make a salsa jar. But this jar doesn't look like anything out there in the salsa space. I mean, this feels like a good first step. Right? My sketches would never get to this point this far in. Right? Even though in my mind I started, I I felt like these facets, I felt that texture. I wanted to grab it and feel that those ridges that are happening on the cliffs, those ridges that are happening on the buildings. I wanted to feel that. I wanted to have that be a part of it. I love the sharp angle on the jar lid and the angles on the base and the top of the jar. Right? These are all really cool elements. When you grab that in your hand, it's going to feel wonderful. Is that the final? No. Uh, but you can always click on the little I button up there and it'll tell you what the prompt was. You could take that and send it to mid journey and get your, you know, see what it comes back with. There's really no point to do that. Just stay in here. Keep exploring. Keep building. This is just water asking more questions. We talk about the colors, um, the accents. What's that, you know, what's that start to look like? And everything that it gives you is not gonna be great, but let's see what we got. You know, we get this jar with like some crazy lid, which is a cool image. Don't get me wrong. It's pretty neat. So lots the facets happening, but this is useless other than the colors. It threw in those colors down the sides. I love those yellows. I love those pinks. This is kind of telling that story. There's some wood in there and there's some met metallics. Those colors do tell a good story. The packaging is horrible, but it's a good start, right? Like these are the things that we can start doing. These are the things that we can start building packaging and branding and messaging from, right? So now I want to maybe do something a little bit different, right? I want to keep the steel lid. I want to keep the still, um, the angled, the facets. I want to keep all those little terms in there and it gives me some garbage. All right. But I still have all the information. I still have my own ideas. I can still build from what I've learned. I can still build from the conversations that we've had just because it gives me a bad response. Doesn't mean that there's something that Oh my God, I, I got to start from scratch. Just keep, just keep talking to it. Okay. Maybe what you gave me was terrible, but just show me some colors. What's a color palette that's inspired by the ingredients, by the city, by the story. You know, and it puts these together. I'm seeing, you know, potentially like a gold, the silver, the yellow, the pink, the green. These are nice. They're not great. I prefer the other ones to be honest, but I'm, I like that bright, bright green that's happening there. Um, so maybe I'm pulling that in because at the end of the day, what I'm not going to, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to show my customer the images from AI, right? I'm pulling all this stuff. This is research. I'm going to pick the colors. I'm going to design the jar. I'm going to pull the best elements out of these things and my own elements, maybe something that, you know, I develop on my own completely tomorrow. I don't know. But again, this is just part of the process. We're all, we're doing this super fast and we're moving really quickly through this. But this is kind of the way that it works, right? Don't be super afraid. You know, I wanted to see what these colors were. So, you know, you, you can, you can get some of the code. I ask it to generate an image of the label and it gives me this, right? It, it feels kind of authentic. It, you know, we talk about the Nopales, getting these illustrations with like the onions and the peppers. And it feels pretty good. And I'm getting the front label and the back label, maybe a side label barcode looks, looks pretty good. Not amazing. But I, I do like it, but I think I like it because it's such a complete design from everything that I've been working hard at in terms of typing and a machine to spit out something that hits a lot of the points. But is it good design? Not, not really. Not at all, <laughs> but it's cool. It's a cool parlor trick, but there are things that I can pull from here. I do like this curve on the text and the ribbon. Um, why do I like that? I don't know. Maybe I'm just feeling it right now. But again, it's not about what I like. It's just about what's right for the brand. So is that right for the brand? Maybe not. Maybe it's just the curve that's happening there because that with those faceted lines, 
Maybe those two are going to give you enough contrast of like the soft and the hard edge. Maybe. We'll have to play around with it. I do kind of like the fonts that, that are on here. Some of the fonts, we've got some compressed type. We've got some expanded type. Um, we've got some type on curves. We've got some little seals. Those are kind of nice. So there's little things here and there. The illustration's, you know, interesting. I don't know that it's necessarily on brand for what we're building, but it's cool. Um, it's a start, right? So you can ask it and, you know, maybe bump back the saturation and in your mind you're like, all right, it's going to, it'll dull things down, but it comes back with some goofy Popeye looking label that sucks. Right? It's never going to be what you want. Then it comes back with this. This is pretty cool. It's a little bit different. It looks like it's got a bunch of pickles on it, but it's green. That's black lid. It's kind of different from what we were looking at, but the colors are nice, right? You have to pick and choose like the best parts and scrap the worst parts, but I do like these colors. I do like this bright white with the green. That does feel modern. That red really stands off of that green. It's taken us away from the pinks and the golds and some of that stuff. But again, this isn't what we're using. This is just spending time on Pinterest, essentially, right? We're just looking at what things can be that communicate this. It's giving me a jar. It's not good, but that's what you want to keep doing. What designers need to know is that AI is not replacing you. AI is a way to think out loud, see in words, create images, but not replace you at all. It's not going to replace a great idea. The fact that we've got, we were able to tie in the flavors, the colors, the architecture, the story, this is the makings of a brand. This is the makings of a product that can be on shelf and can compete and can connect with a consumer, right? It's not perfect. It's not ready to go. We did a lot of work in just that short amount of time. And it's something that you can do. It seems like we did a whole lot of typing and not a whole lot of designing. But the truth is that in the design, in the development of an idea, there's a lot of conversation, whether it's conversation between yourself and Google you and the sketchpad, you and a collaborator. There's a lot of conversations. You're not just having a customer walk in and then you design something. You've got to learn about it. You've got to learn how to build a story. This is a great tool to do that. This is going to make you move a lot faster by doing that because as you're reading the information, you're learning new things. You're picking up new little bits and pieces. Then you're going back and digging further, maybe taking these different roads. And it allows you to you know, pick path A and maybe you find that you don't like where you, where you were. You can always go back to that point. You can edit your response and then take path B. We can find out about the yellows. Maybe we don't like that. We can go back to where we developed the yellow conversation and then go and take it to the pink conversation. It's super easy, but it allows you to have multiple conversations to dig up the information about the, about the product, the brand, the packaging, the story, all the things that are going to make a difference in the final design. You get some good concepts here. These are things that I would potentially show to a client as a sketch. Take these ideas, now start sketching them out and actually build something cool as a sketch that I could show. But then if you really want to do something quick, if you're looking for the parlor trick, if you want to do that, it's super easy. Same thing. Let's say Taco Bell was going to release a new salsa in a jar. Um, let's make it crazy. It's going to be purple. It's going to have black. Imagine the flavors of that were spicy and extra salt and, and lemon. It's going to give you some information, right? Okay, well, this is kind of what the customers want. And you can look through that information or you can just skip to it and say, hey man, make me an image. I love it. Show me the packaging design for this. It takes a second. That jar, that label, even can spell the name right. Even has the logo twice. It has some like, you know, filigree embossed. You got a purple label coming down to give it that authentic feel. Done. Second, but is that good? No. It's just amazing that it developed it so quickly. But it's not good. There's nothing there. There's no story. So don't waste your time doing that stuff. It's fun. You can spend hours doing that. But spend the time to actually build and craft a story. That's what AI is for. That's why I'm not showing you mid-journey. That's why I'm not showing you runway. Because who gives a shit about that? You want to use something that's actually useful today you as a freelancer, as an agency, as a brand, as an entrepreneur, you can really find something out about the product that you're building 
and build a really beautiful story from it. Let's do one more example. We're going to go through and just build an entire packaging design for a salsa brand, super quick, but let's call it Taco Hell instead of Taco Bell. And instantly you get, yeah, you know, it seems like a pretty good first round. Um, it's got like a skull and then let's build a mood board from it. It reverse engineers a mood board, shows you a bunch of skulls, similar illustration style, definitely the colors. Is it good? No, but it, it, we're doing the parlor trick, right? Parlor tricks aren't necessarily known for quality. Uh, what if we bring in like Patron? Okay, maybe that's a little weird, um, but could be cool. Maybe it's a, it's a collab between Taco Hell and Patron. And if we keep asking it, asking it to redesign the jar, asking it to add something here, add something there, maybe do a little bit of a shadow, create, you know, add maybe different ingredients, different styles. It'll do that. These images are, these images are 100% amazing. They are mind blowing quality images of bad design, but it can do that in seconds. And that's what I think we get amazed by. And it's not that great. You know, this one I do like, um, you know, I had it just regenerate with real ingredients, but this one I do, I do like this, um, but I don't like it as like a standalone label. If we look closely at it, um, the vegetables make up the skull. It is pretty cool. You know, the onion, the skull, the teeth, you know, I can envision those teeth being replaced by corn kernels with this salsa add corn in it. Um, there's like a lot of different things that you can do with this, but again, is it a good design? No. Would I have come up with a concept like this if this was the right solution for that particular brand? Probably, probably a lot better, right? But the fact that it's able to generate it in seconds from words that I type is amazing. We get amazed, but don't, don't let it impress you. It's, it's easy to be impressed by the quality of the images that are coming out, but don't forget, it's not about the quality of the image, it's about the quality of the idea. So stop being impressed. Stop feeling inadequate. Stop feeling like you need to keep up with every single thing out there with AI, because you don't. One tool. Be a better designer. That's all you got to do. If you've got any questions, reach out to me on LinkedIn, Evelio Matos. Find me, I'm on there all the time, using all sorts of AI. I have a lot of different people that I'm talking to and collaborating with on AI projects. So always learning. And that's the one thing I can tell you is you're never going to know everything. You're always going to feel left behind in one area or another. So just focus on the one that matters to you. And this is the one that makes the biggest difference in a designer's world. Everything else is, is a toy. Thanks.